So I looked up um, how to present a TED Talk, and the number one thing not to do and how to start your speech is to um, tell the people in front of you how grateful you are for the opportunity. <laughs> um, but the places that I've been mentally and emotionally, um, I'm lucky to be alive, so I want to thank you for this opportunity. My name is Nathan Tansman. I'm 20 years old. I was born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. From a young age, I was always involved in sports. Anything with a ball, I would play. My parents were sports fanatics, and uh, my dad's side, boxing. Boxing. My grandfather was a boxing trainer. My uncle was his assistant. I'd go over to my grandpa's house, and boxing was always on the TV. Memorabilia, autographs, pictures, posters, you name it, they had it. There's this quote in boxing that says, never get caught on your back. For being caught on your back leaves you in a position for another man to stand over you. My father lived his life this way. He never showed emotion. And it wasn't until he was 65 years old that I saw him cry for the first time with the death of his mother, my grandmother. My early memories of my father were him working 10 to 12 hour days, never taking a break, never asking for help. He was very emotionally absent with myself and my mother. His reason? I gotta earn a living, son. I gotta put food on the table and a roof over your head. After years and years of this, my mother divorced him, very unhappy. And then two years later, and I believe in no coincidence, he developed a heart issue. The same heart issue that took the life of his father and his grandfather. And at the same exact time, I had sunk into a deep depression. So deep that I thought about taking my own life. Just as my father didn't tell me his life was on the line, I didn't tell him either. Now I want to take you to August 9th, 2012. My father was on his regular business trip that he took for as long as I can remember. Same trip, same flight, same hotel, every week. I, 20 years old, uh, find myself working at a car dealership just like my dad. I get a call on my phone, over and over I, I, I pick it up, look at the phone, it's a number I don't have, put it back in my pocket, over and over and over. I pick it up, a soft voice. Hello, Nathan, this is Clay, telemarketer, right? Gotta be. I keep feeling my phone. I pick it up again, there's a text message. Nathan, I need you to call me. It's about your father, it's an emergency. My father had a heart attack on the airplane. They had to do an emergency landing, and by the grace of God, even after flatlining, they managed to save his life. She says, he's awake and stable. He's gonna be okay. So now I'm wondering, if he's awake and stable, why didn't he call me? He actually went out of his way to call my mother, his ex-wife, and tell her specifically not to tell my brother and I what was going on. He was going to go in there, get the surgery, have everything taken care of, walk out, and never say a word. So days went by, and I'm thinking, I'm like, Dad, why? Why? And then just like the quote says, he didn't want to get caught on his back with another man standing over him, even his two sons. Today, 123 men will commit suicide. 80% of violent crimes are committed by men, and studies are saying by the age of 13 years old that young men will start using substances. We're facing the biggest mental health crisis that this world has ever seen, and the root is that men are measured by money, materials, and women. We're giving these young men life demands and scripts at such a young age that they can't live up to. We need to redefine what it is to be masculine and educate our youth that masculinity comes from vulnerability. And men are defined by the possessions that they have and their mental capability to hide what's inside them. They're defined by times when they have nothing, when no one is around, and when they get nothing in return. So I'll leave you with this. What is masculinity to you? Thank you.